Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use UMG? How do I change the widget position using nodes? I've gone ahead and created a quick example here. When I hit pull up my pause menu, it animates in a menu. When I hit return, it animates it out. So we'll go ahead and cover how I did that. Now I have another video. It's how to do the same thing using the animation system. What we're going to do is show you how to do this using the node system. This way it's done at runtime. Maybe you need to adjust something based on the positioning of other items and you are not able to do it using the animation system. This one is a lot more complex, but it does give you a lot more flexibility once you implement it and we will go over it. So I've gone ahead and created a pause menu panel. Let me pull it up onto the screen so you can see what it is. Basically, it's a border with a canvas panel inside of it with a few things. Now, the border itself is inside of a canvas panel. In order to access your anchors, your positions, your size, and your alignment, something has to be inside of a canvas panel. Your widget has to be using a canvas panel as its parent or you do not have access to these things. So, that's one of the keys. Now, let's go ahead and reset this back to zero. And we'll go ahead and go through the code. Now, I am using the player character in order to determine when the button is pressed, as well as to do most of the code. In the animation example, I was using the animation, the widget itself, to control. However, since I want to use timelines, and you cannot use a timeline inside of a widget, I will have to use the player character to control that. So, let's actually go through our widget itself and you'll notice I have almost no code here basically when you quit the game it quits the game and then when you click the return button it's simply calling the pause menu that is inside of our player character that's it there's nothing else inside of our widget it's for display purposes only right now so here is our code right here in this large graph that's simply been formatted to make it easier to read let's run through this First thing when you toggle the pause menu is I'm checking to see if we actually have a widget created. I'm checking against null. If this is the first time through and we have not created the widget, it's going to check. So our first time through, it will be null and we want to go ahead and create an actual widget on the screen. This is all simple standard stuff. I create the widget. I set the UI widget variable for later use. I add it to the viewport. I go ahead and show our mouse cursor and set our input mode to UI only, that way we control our UI. One additional thing, since you need to do any animation, positioning, and anything like that on the canvas panel slot, not the widget itself, I go ahead and get a reference to the canvas panel slot by getting the widget, targeting my pause menu panel, slotting its parent as a canvas slot, and saving it out to UI widget slot. Since we'll be using this for all of our actual animation purposes, we need to save it to make it easier. Now, if it was true and we've created it, or if it's false and it's already created, we go ahead and go to our next step. Right here, we are basically taking our existing slot, getting the position, and saving that to start X and start Y variables. Our current positioning for our current panel has zero for the X and Y, so it's not really of any need. But if you happen to have different starting X and starting Ys, perhaps something is partially off the screen or it's off more or just basically I cache this for training purposes and tutorial purposes to show you how you would use it. So we get to our main point here, which is our flip-flop. First time through it's A, second time to it through it's B, normal flip-flop node. I'm using a lerp. If you notice, I have a nice funky looking curve here, which is one of the advantages of using a timeline. Over half a second, I'm simply lerping from zero to one, and I have a little bit of a curve here to give a little bit of a pop to the top, snap back down, and then pop back to the normal position, which you can see in the animation itself. So here is the majority of our code that controls what we're doing. Basically, during each of our updates we are changing the position the anchor and the alignment of our widget 
Now, if you went through the animation tutorial already, you'll notice that we were basically setting our anchors and our alignments. Since we're doing this in code, we're going to go ahead and set the position as well, just to be safe. If your start X and start Y are not zero, and we're going to animate back into the center here, then you're going to need to make sure you have this node here. So what we do the first time is basically we go from our starting position, and we go to our next starting position using the lerp based on our timeline, and then we set the position. We do the same thing with our anchor, and the same thing with our alignment. So basically, in an illustrated point, what this is going to do is it's slowly going to move our pause panel from where it is now up to the middle by adjusting our anchor point and our alignment point. So for example, if I was to change our anchor point up slowly, assume both of these are connected, for example. You'll notice by changing the anchor, it's going to drag it up slowly. And if we change our alignment towards the middle, it's going to change where it snaps into the middle. So our goal is to go from where we originally started to the middle of the screen, like so, using a smooth lerp over half a second. So let's go and reset this back to how we had it. Snap it to the bottom, snap it to the top, set our position back. One thing to keep in mind here, as you notice, every time I change the anchor or the alignment, the position automatically updated. Let's go ahead and show that for example purposes. We have position zero and zero. I change my anchor to the middle. We now have zero and 540, where 540 is half of my 1080 height. This is a convenience feature in the editor only. If you change the anchor in code, like we are doing here with set anchor, it will not adjust the position. That is something to keep in mind. This is a convenience feature because they figure you don't want your widgets flying all over the screen when you change your anchors on design time. So keep that in mind. So basically, as we change our anchor and our alignment during runtime, it's slowly going to move everything into our goal, which is our goal in the middle. So if we go back to our code, you'll notice that this will simply run until we hit our half second, and then it will finish. Our finish simply checks to see if we are in the A flip-flop, as in the bring on the screen. And if it is, we do nothing. Because if it isn't, as in we've just gone ahead and hidden our widget off the screen, well, we need to make sure we actually do something with that. We remove it from the parrot. We go ahead and set our widget and our widget slot to null, since we no longer have a valid one. And we go ahead and hide our mouse cursor and set our input mode to game only. So let me go ahead and let's set a breakpoint here. And we'll go ahead and run this so you can see what happens. We'll go ahead and hit play. And when I hit my pause menu, we're going to go ahead and break right here. Now if we look at our input nodes right here you'll notice that we are aiming our position to zero zero since we're starting at zero zero and we're ending at zero zero right here our b's that's never going to change our anchors are starting at 0.5 and 1 which is to match our anchors here and we're going to end at 0.5 and 0.5 which is the middle and you'll notice that this values will slowly change to match same thing with our lerp down here for our alignment. We're starting at 0 0.50 for our alignment, which is set to match here, which is the top of our widget. And what our goal is to get to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which will be the middle. And you'll notice it was going to slowly change the values to match. So if we were to go ahead and resume, 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 resume a few times, you'll notice it eventually will get to the middle. And if we were to check our values in here, they'd be set to our actual goals, which is the middle of the screen. So that's it. That's a way to go ahead and control your widgets position-wise inside of a node itself, not using the animation system. So like I said, this is handy. Let's say you have a button on the screen. Now you don't know where that button is on the screen itself because you created it at runtime and you need to go ahead and have something animate in from maybe the right side into the left and snap next to it. Well, using code like this, you can go ahead and set up your starting locations to be where it currently is, and then you can set your ending locations to the right side of your widget and then have it slide in smoothly. With an animation system, since you can't determine at runtime, you cannot adjust an animation at runtime. 
Animations are done at design time only. So due to that, you can't adjust it at runtime, and therefore you can't use an animation. It's just as simple as that. So it looks like a lot of code, but the biggest key here is you are just simply lerping over time and changing the positions, the anchors, and the alignments to get to your goal. So figure out what your goal is, where you're starting, what values you have, where you plan on ending up, what values you have, enter that into your lerps, and let it run. That's it. And the nice feature of using the timeline is you were able to go in here, and I simply went in and I adjusted my curves. Like for example, I could do, let's take this and move it up more, and we'll go ahead and hit play this time. And you'll notice when it pulls on the menu, it snaps a lot more at the top. So it's a nice easy way to add some simple animation into your animations as well.